Let's say we are performing an instrument approach. This instrument approach has ALSIF 2 as the approach light system. When you are coming in through the clouds, you are expecting to see ALSIF 2 when you are at the TA. And if you've seen my previous video about briefing an instrument approach, you know that I want you guys to brief the approach light system because that is the first thing you see breaking out of the clouds. Now, if you are breaking out of the clouds and suddenly you've realized that the ALSIF 2 is inoperative, you cannot see ALSIF 2, you cannot see any approach light system at all, what do you do? Of course, the practical thing to do is to wait for the runway inside or if the runway is not inside, go best. But how could we have avoided this situation? Obviously, check the no times. Okay, we check the no times. Now we know that ALSIF 2 is inoperative. What changes for the approach if the approach light system is inoperative? That is what we are going to talk about in this video. And if you've been following my videos, you know that if you watch the full video somewhere in the middle or at the end there is a small little bonus tip or something that will help you to learn this easier and make a plan of action whenever you encounter such a scenario the inoperative components table welcome to the video guys this is a video that i am updating in one of my courses arriving in ifr and i thought i would put it up on youtube as well so that you guys can learn something from it the inoperative components table what would happen to the minimums of an approach when the approach light systems or any of the visual aids go inoperative the inoperative components table is used in addition to the fa approach charts whenever any of the components or visual aids associated with an instrument approach is inoperative. This table right here allows us to make changes to the minimums so that we are able to fly the approach safely. I'll give you guys a little understanding of why do we need to adjust the minimums when something goes inoperative. A very simple and very easy way of understanding this would be think of an approach light system. Okay. Let's say you are performing an ILS approach, you are coming in at the DA. If you have the approach light system working, the approach light system will reduce the amount of distance you need to see because from the DA, you can see the approach light system. Let's say the approach light system is not working. Now you'll have to wait for the runway threshold to be inside or the runway end identifier lights, which means that the amount of visibility required to continue will increase this is the reason we use inoperative components table and that is why it is important for us to know now if we are using jepson instrument plates jepson instrument plates provide us the changes the variation within the particular instrument approach plate itself but the fa approach plates do not have that when you are using an fa approach plate you will be going to the inoperative components table and making changes to your minimums. Now let's read the inoperative components or visual aids table first. Very important to read the notes. Straight in sidestep landing minimums published on instrument approach procedure charts are based on full operation of all components visual aids associated with the appropriate chart being used. This is what I said. Now higher minimums will be required with inoperative components or visual aids as indicated below. If more than one component is inoperative, each minimum is raised to the highest minimum required by any single component that is inoperative. We'll come back to this once we are done understanding how to use it with one component inoperative. ILS glide slope inoperative minimums are published on instrument approach charts as localizer minimums. So if the glide slope is inoperative, you don't have to come to the components table, rather you just go and do the The first table is about ILS, PAR, LPV, GLS minima, inoperative component or visual aid, all approach light systems, increase visibility by one fourth mile. That is how you use it. For us to understand, obviously, I use examples. That is the basis of my courses to make students understand things practically. So let's take an example, which will be the ILS runway 
one four in Sarasota SRQ. This approach has Malser as the approach light system. Let's say on a given day, Malser is inoperative and you read it in the note amp and you will be performing the ILS straight in ILS one four. The visibility required is half a statute mile. Your DA is 223 feet. Now, what do we do when the Malser is inoperative? You go to the chart, all approach light system types increase by one fourth mile. If our approach light system, which is Malser is inoperative, you would increase the visibility required by one fourth mile. What will it be now? Half plus one fourth, three fourth statute mile visibility. That's our new minimums. Now let's go on to look at the second table. The second table is ILS LPV GLS with visibility minima of RVR 1800, 2000, 2200. So again, I have another example for this. Let's take a look at Tampa ILS runway 19er left. Tampa ILS localizer runway 19er left is a very straightforward approach. It has ALSEF 2 as the approach light system. Let's say ALSEF 2 is inoperative. If you look at the minimums, they have 1800 feet RVR as the minimum visibility required. That's why we would be using table number two and not one. Although both of them are for ILS, this table number two is specifically for the approaches ILS, LPV, GLS with visibility minima of RVR 1800, 2000, 2200. Since we just saw it is 1800, this is the table that applies to us. What is inoperative? ALSEF 2 is inoperative. ALSEF 1 and 2 increase visibility 4000 or 4500. Which one to use? Well, this is where most of the students get confused. Although I think that it is not the student's fault because sometimes we instructors forget to talk about inoperative components table, which is very important. And that's why the students cannot figure it out on their own. It is our job to teach you guys how to use the inoperative components table. So how do we use it? If take a look at the top of the table or the header, the title, 1800 feet has a plus next to it. Go to increase visibility column to RVR 4000 has a plus next to it, which means if the, the RVR of our approach was 1800, you would increase it to 4000. You would increase it to 4500 if it was 2000 or 2200, which is not our case. So what will be our new minimums? Instead of 1800 feet RVR, when the ALSIF 2 is inoperative, my new minimums would be 4000 feet RVR. It is interesting to note here that the minimums increase from 1800 to 4000 feet, which is about 2200 feet jump. And most of these approach light systems are 2400 feet long. Just food for thought, an interesting thing to remember. Going further, it also has provisions for touchdown zone lights and runway center line lighting system to be inoperative to RVR 2400, etc. Now is where we go to the paragraph we read in the beginning, which said that if more than one component is inoperative, minimum is raised to highest minimum required by any single component that is inoperative. So coming back to our scenario, if you look at ILS or localizer runway 19 left in Tampa, it has ALSEF 2 as well as it has touchdown zone lighting for runway 19 and left. Let's say the touchdown zone lightings were also inoperative. Now what? So for inoperative ALSEF 2, we saw that it was 4000. Touchdown zone lighting, it says 2400. What we have to do now is we will be using the one which is higher. So we will not be adding 4000 plus 2400, 6400 RVR. That's not very practical otherwise we'll keep stacking up minimums and we'll not be able to shoot an approach in that case so what we'll do is we'll use the highest of the two which is 4000 that's what the note says in the top now let's see what the pound key let's see what the hashtag or the pound signifies for ILS LPV GLS procedures with a 200 foot height above touchdown which is category 1 ILS RVR 1800 is authorized with the use of flight director autopilot or a heads up display to the decision altitude. Now, yes, it is not a part of the topic in hand, but flight director, autopilot or heads up display make it easier to fly an instrument approach precisely. That's why reduced minimums might apply. Check out the notes section of every approach plate to see if there are lower minimums, which we'll see soon. 
Then you have the third table, which is all approach types and all lines of minima other than one and two, which is ILS, LPV, ILS, PRG, all of these approach. Let's say an RNAV approach. Do I have an example? Hell yeah, I have an example. So we'll be looking at RNAV runway 10 left in Palm Beach International Airport. It has Malser. This is an RNAV approach with minimums of 2400 feet RVR. And there's a pound key. What is the pound key for? The pound key is for 1800 feet RVR authorized with the use of flight director or AP or heads up display to a decision altitude. Malser is inoperative. What do we do? 2400 is the minima. We go to the third table. Malser is inoperative. Increase visibility by half a statute mile. Now what? We had 2400 RVR and we need to increase it in miles. There is this table that you see in the legend or the first few pages of the TPP which helps you convert between RVR and statute miles. So 2400 is half a statute mile half a statute mile plus the half a statute mile that we need to increase would be one statute mile one statute mile is again 5000 feet rvr from that table this is how you would play with the inoperative components table you can look into the table number four and five at your own convenience but that is how you use the inoperative components table be sure to check out these examples in my course video what i will do is within my website i'll allow this video as a preview and it will have these approach plates under the video itself you can follow along the approach plates as well as the video to understand how to use in operative components table better when does this table not apply this table does not apply when it specifically says that in operative table does not apply to straight in ils 7 left this is an example for Daytona Beach International Airport. A lot of times students in a check ride forget to read this and if given a scenario, hey, Malser is inoperative in ILS 7 left in Daytona, what do you do? The student thinks, oh, inoperative, inoperative component stable, starts doing the calculation, gives out the answer only to realize that it was right in front of them that it does not apply. You see where that can be a problem. So read the notes the second reason why an operative components table might not apply is when the approach chart itself has notes regarding what to do when approach light system becomes inoperative for this very reason now you know how important it is to read and brief the notes on every approach chart take a look at the okala international jim taylor field airport ils localizer dme run with 36 approach in the notes section, you have an operative table does not apply to straight in ILS 36 all categories when using local altimeter settings. Okay, for inoperative Malser increase straight in localizer 36 category A and B to one mile. So if you are doing the localizer and the Malser was inoperative, you wouldn't have to use the inoperative components table. You are going to use the notes. That's it. That's how we use the inoperative components table or deal with a situation or a scenario in which the approach light system or any of the visual aid has gone inoperative. Remember, the rule of thumb is to first look at the notes and then go to the inoperative components table. When you go to the inoperative components table, make sure you use the correct table 1, 2 and 3. You saw how table 1 is different than 2 because Two, two applies to only those which have 1800, 2000, 2200 as their RVR. Be careful when using the correct one. Also, be careful about what kind of approach light system are we think talking about. Is it ALSEF? Is it a MALSER? See what approach light system is used for that particular runway. I hope you learned something from the video. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, subscribe this channel, hit the notification bell to get updated whenever I post a useful video like this. Also, check out my course website propellerpilot.com which has really interesting and very, very useful courses for pilots in training. I hope you have a good rest of your day. Happy landings. All right, now that you've stuck around till the end of the video, I'll give you a nice little plan of action to follow whenever you come 
across a scenario like this in real life or in a check ride what happens when one of the components or visual aids are inoperative first thing i would do is check the notes of that particular approach read the notes thoroughly and see if there are any changes for your category of the aircraft in the notes itself if there are notes saying that increase rvr by 1200 2400 etc do it and if there are no notes then go to the inoperative components table make sure when you are using the inoperative components table you use the correct table 1 2 3 4 blah 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 because these different tables apply to different types of approaches and different types of approach light systems be careful to locate your instrument approach and the approach light system that is there for that particular runway or the approach this is what i do whenever i come across this kind of a scenario notes and then the inoperative components table that's it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.